I have the great privilege today to be with uh, Ilami uh, Yildiz, who is a professor uh, here at Cal Poly, who's working on some very interesting, even exciting research dealing with biofuels, uh, a technology arena which is exploding uh, around the world because of our efforts to try and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions while also uh, reducing our uh, reliance on traditional hydrocarbon fuels. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real privilege. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, we have the honor, indeed. Thank well, you're you very for kind. visiting us. Well, as I understand it, in the biofuels arena, we're all familiar uh, with corn and molasses and all sorts of sort of traditional uh, feedstocks. Right. Right. But you're working on something that's much more exciting because you're working on a feedstock that we see every day, but we don't appreciate has enormous energy potential. And that feedstock is algae, that algae could someday fuel uh, our cars and allow us to replace a huge amount of uh, imported oil with something that's uh, grown naturally and is very renewable. That is, that is correct. Uh, one more time, it's, it's a great pleasure and honor to have you here. And uh, we, we try our best at Cal Poly. What we do here is very simple. Yes. We have a very modest a uh, little friend. We call we call this friend little green algae. Little green algae. Little green algae. So um, algae <coughs> helps us in terms of in terms of energy, renewable energy generation, and also and also uh, helps us to save our environment as well. That's great. As well, uh, what happens here? Uh, traditionally speaking, we do have traditional feedstocks like corn, uh, soybean, etc. Uh, however, uh, they are at the same time, uh, they are uh, food stocks. And we've been reading about the increase exactly. in, in the cost of food, food prices because the competition with fuel. Absolutely, absolutely. So, when we use traditional crops, land crops, as as uh, bioenergy uh, crops, then we start competing with food. We start competing with agricultural land. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. food prices go up. Uh, go up. So the beauty with algae in this case, well, we don't have such thing. We don't have to deal with, we don't have to compete with agricultural land. We don't compete with food prices, basically. It has no effect on. Well, what's the difference in productivity, for example, in gallons per acre? Is there per a benefit acre. there also? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, traditionally, again, generally speaking, if, if we take a look at, for instance, corn, uh, corn, we get about about 20 gallons, 20 gallons of oil per acre per So one yield. fill up of my car per acre. Per acre. With corn. With corn. How about with algae? With algae. With algae, uh, theoretically speaking, based on lab scale work, theoretically speaking, uh, we, can, we can talk about a range between 5,000 gallons and 20,000 gallons per acre Per year. So that means I can fill up my car 500 times so instead many of one times time you are good on that at same that. acre. Excellent, absolutely. That's how it works. And again, this is, this is just the energy side. Just the energy side. Now, I, I keep talking, for instance, and I need energy. My brain needs energy. Where do I get it from? I get it from, let's say, Coffee? Omega, Omega, <laughs> it oh. boosts. Oh. But in the first place, it, in the first place, the primary source is Omega-3, for instance. Where do I get it from the fish? Fish gets it from algae. This is, this is another thing. This is another byproduct in addition to, in addition to energy, we also get omega-3 and a number of other other biochemicals. So what sort of research are you doing here at Cal Poly? I, you've got it's these, I guess you call them small bioreactors here? Absolutely, thank you. This is, we have three different photobioreactors here. Basically, they are, as you see, they are identical, but operating at uh, different conditions. We play with the temperature, we play with the lighting conditions, and we play with pH carbon dioxide dosing. Mm -hmm. Algae is a plant, as, as, as we know. Um, it requires carbon dioxide, water, and light. And what the beauty of that is if carbon dioxide essentially is food for algae, we're pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, which is also an objective exactly. we have. Exactly. That's, that's one of the biggest objectives we have. We are trying to save our, our environment as well. So instead of releasing carbon dioxide, 
into the environment, into our aerial environment, mm -hmm. we take up the CO2, our friend, our friend, friend, little friend, takes up the CO2 and processes it for, for us and serves us again energy and all kinds of other beings. That's fantastic. Now I understand you also have some industry partners which have stepped forward to help with your effort with grants, so it's, it, you have interest already. Uh, from uh, from the community and from the business community. Correct, correct. Again, thanks for asking that question too. We do have two local partners. One is BKS Energy, another one is Energy Alternative Solutions Inc. Those are our industry partners. However, we do have a number of institutional partners as well, mm -hmm. like the USDA, yeah, an agricultural it. research initiative, state of California, local. Uh, we do have a grant, about $400,000 grant, and uh, that grant makes this for And possible. you've got a graduate student uh, helping? Absolutely. Well, who Absolutely. is that graduate student? I do have a graduate student. I have the greatest pleasure basically working with him, Mr. Thomas Melitz. He is from Germany, and I call him my golden guy. <laughs> my golden guy and has been so Well, productive. it's so exciting to have some of the gr these great minds and, and these uh, insightful ideas that potentially allows Cal Poly uh, to help solve these global problems. It's been a real privilege to visit with you today. Thank, thank you. you so much. That belongs to us. Thank, thank you, thank so you much. very much. Take thank care. you. Thank you again for joining us uh, with another episode of Treasures of the Central Coast as we've had a chance to visit Cal Poly, one of the finest institutions of higher education in California. We've had an opportunity to see an institution that serves upwards of 20,000 students and has some of the most advanced uh, technical programs in engineering and architecture. And as you saw in bioenergy, potentially leading the way to solving some of the states and even the nation's uh, energy challenges in the future. We're so lucky to have an institution like this here amongst us. And uh, I tell you, it's been a treat to see the impact uh, Cal Poly is having in our community. Thank you for joining us. For more information, contact Assemblyman Sam Blakesley at his district office, 1104 Palm Street, San Luis Obispo, California, 93401, 805-549-3381, or you can visit him online. Thank you for watching The Capitol Report.